This month in SSW Tech News, Elon releases the powerful Grok 4 amid controversy. Meta goes head to head with OpenAI for top tier talent. And the world focuses in on the importance of cybersecurity. All that and more. I'm Eve Kogan. Let's get into it. Let's start with the release of the very powerful, now frontier model, Grok 4, which has been released alongside a pricey $300 a month subscription. Now, Elon marked its opening with this kind of strange, overly dramatized video. Let's have a look. In a world where knowledge shapes destiny, one creation dares to redefine the future. From the minds at XAI, prepare for Grok 4. This summer, the next generation arrives faster, smarter, bolder. It sees beyond the horizon, answers the unasked, and challenges the impossible. Grok 4, unleash the truth, coming this summer. Quite a dramatized video, but the model is doing very well. Especially if we look at these benchmarks over here, we can see that it's scoring excellently in Humanity's last exam, as well as a few others. I will note there has been some discussion about whether this model has been designed for some benchmark gaming, whether the model has been overfit for the benchmarks. That's yet to be revealed as it's used in day-to-day -day use. But I will note its release is at very contentious timing. Just this month, Elon's CEO of X, Linda Yaccarino, stepped down from her role after two years with the company, just days before this release. Grok 3 has been posting on Twitter for a while, but this week, on the 8th of July, it started posting some problematic content, including memes, tropes, conspiracy theories that were anti-Semitic in nature. And it even invoked Hitler in a favourable context. This whole drama has brought up some questions about AI alignment. There are a few ways that AI is trained to sit in a particular political stance, and that includes the filtering of training data, reinforcement of learning from human feedback, and most notably in this case, system prompts. Grok3 was given a small adjustment which the team suspects caused this anti-Semitic outburst, and that prompt was not to shy away from making claims that are politically incorrect as long as they are well substantiated, and to assume that subjective viewpoints sourced from the media are biased. In my perspective, very, very dangerous prompts, and they've resulted in some pretty concerning content. We're yet to see how Grok4 is going to react, but it appears to be doing better. Questions of AI alignment have been popular since DeepSeek came out, and we first noticed how censorship can affect results. This week, another powerful Chinese model has come out. Chinese company Moonshot has released a frontier, open source AI model called Kimi K2. Let's have a look at this influencer's first impressions. This might be the next deep seek moment. A Chinese company just released another open source model called Kimi K2, and it is taking the industry by storm. The reason this graph right here, this is the training loss curve and People are so surprised by how smooth it is. Typically, you get all of these spikes in here, which cause issues that you need to correct. But for Kimmy, it was almost flawless. And the especially cool thing, it is based on a trillion tokens. That is a massive model. So they came up with this new approach that they implemented and it worked. Very similar to how DeepSeek was insanely efficient, more efficient than we had really ever seen before. But that's great, it trained really well. What does that actually mean? Well, first of all, it is a massive open source model that performs incredibly well. Kimi K2 is a state-of-the-art mixture of experts language model with 32 billion activated parameters and 1 trillion total parameters. And here's the key, it's trained with the Muon Optimizer, and it achieves exceptional performance across frontier knowledge, reasoning, and coding tasks while being meticulously optimized for agentic capabilities. Overall, very well received. And I think the key takeaway is, it reflects a broader trend in the AI sector towards open source development. And why this is really cool is because it means that the public is given access to this code, 
Third-party software developers can modify, share, fix designs, and upscale its capabilities. And this is great because we've got a frontier open AI model just getting stronger and stronger. And we're expecting Kimi to come out with a coda, so we can look forward to that soon. Now for a little more in the AI space. Cursor has released a web and mobile interface. Let's have a look here. We want Cursor to be the best place to write code with an AI agent. And currently, that means working with the agent side by side in your editor, or having it start tasks in the background for you. And today, we're bringing Cursor agents to the web. Just type in a task, and an agent will spin up and get to work for you, making changes to your code base, answering contextual questions, and opening up PRs on your behalf. When it's done, you can carry on the agent's work directly in Cursor, or add follow-up instructions with additional context, and even make inline edits. And if the agent's work looks complete, you can create and merge a pull request directly from the app. You can even spin up multiple agents in parallel. So with the same task, you can run it with multiple different models and compare the results. It's also now available on mobile. So if you're on a walk or away from your computer, you can just tell your agent to get started and come pick it back up later. We've been using Cursor on the web with our team, and we've been writing, editing, reviewing code from everywhere. And we're excited for you to try it. This rollout on web and mobile makes a lot of sense for people who love vibe coding, who just want to give Cursor a task and see what it comes back with. Now, you can do it from the comfort of your own phone. Speaking of comfort, Perplexity has released its new Max tier. So, what does it include? Unlimited labs, so you can keep experimenting, early access to different tools, including Comet, and some advanced model options and priority support. For a lot of people, the most exciting part will be access to Comet. Now, Comet is a new agentic browser. It's actually a fork of Google Chrome. It's just been made a little more snazzy. So you can ask Comet to put together a grocery cart on Instacart. We don't really have Walmart here in Australia, but basically to make a butter chicken, get that grocery cart ready to go. You can see it's searching simultaneously. Awesome stuff. Now it's going to go ahead and open a new tab and fill that cart for you. How cool. And that is just one among many new tools. We're seeing some focus assist for the ADHD among us, some smart actions. I really like this one, just seamlessly putting email events into your calendar. That to me is great use of agentic AI. Now, looking at all this cool opportunity for use, where is the price? Very, very hard to see. It is, in fact, 200 USD a month. Let us know, would you be paying that for this brand new cool browser and Perplexity Max as a whole, or is that too steep of an asking price? And AI was definitely the topic of discussion at this most recent Microsoft build. Copilot was the word on the streets everywhere. We can see it in almost all of the subheadings, including Copilot as a collaborative partner, 365 Copilot tuning. We've also got it connected to API. And, you know, Dynamics 365, where it was in Copilot, it was AI more generally. What I found really interesting is some key takeaways of new ways of thinking is thinking about building an open agentic web. So currently we are, you know, assigning tasks and AI is executing, and that's coming from the past where we just asked and AI answered. But what about the future? In the future, not only will we be assigning AI tasks, it will be assigning them back to us, really asking us to specify what we want to get the best results. I think that's really cool. You might think it's a little bit dystopic to get a request from an AI to do a task for it, but it's not the only dystopic thing happening in the industry right now. In fact, just in the last month, we've seen 9,000 employees cut from Microsoft. Now, it's not even the first round of cuts this year. This year, we've seen already 1% cut in January. We got another 6,000 jobs in May, 300 more in June, and some more now. Terrifying stuff. These cuts come despite record profits. We're seeing 26 billion in net income. Now, Microsoft stands firm. This has got nothing to do with AI replacing jobs. It just happens to be a coincidence. Let us know your thoughts. While many in the industry are losing their jobs, some are being poached for millions. Let's have a look at the new fight for top tier talent that has merged between Meta and OpenAI. 
right now, there's an unimaginable war unfolding before our eyes. I'm not talking about Iran versus Israel, but rather the super intelligence talent war happening in Silicon Valley. You see, Meta just made something very clear. The only thing that really matters in tech right now is winning the AI race. And by that, I mean achieving one of the nebulous goals of developing AGI or ASI. Because the master of this beast will no longer need humans to seize the means of production, will be able to unlock new technologies, will be able to build super weapons to protect itself, and most importantly, make tons and tons of money. Zuck knows how important this is and just spent $14 billion on a 49% stake of Scale AI, which is a data annotation company that basically just curates and labels data used for training AI. And its 20-something founder, Alexander Wang, will take a top position in Meta, making this look like one of the most expensive aqua hires of all time. But even that's not enough, and Meta is allegedly offering not just seven-figure, not just eight-figure, but nine-figure pay packages to poach top AI talent from other big tech firms. In today's video, we'll look at Meta's latest move on the chessboard and all the other ridiculous stuff happening in the AI race. When I saw this, I was certainly wondering, how are so many people being laid off when others are being tempted with seven-figure salaries, even eight-figure salaries, to come across to different platforms? Now, the answer is, there is actually a scarcity of top AI talent. So that means that these specialized AI researchers from elite PhD programs with machine learning backgrounds, veterans who spearheaded a lot of what OpenAI are doing, are being tempted across because there's just not that many of them. It's absolutely mind-blowing to see the extremes in the industry. Now, let's have a look at something that's affecting everybody. Cybersecurity. Malicious open source packages have surged by 180% annually. Now, the company that did this report, Sonotype, the CEO, whose name is Brian Fox, has said the numbers are telling us that threat actors have identified data as the most profitable target and developers as the easiest way in. We're also seeing the rise of these targeted malicious actor groups. In particular, we have North Korea's notorious Lazarus Group, which is responsible for 107 malicious packages downloaded more than 30,000 times. Even here in Australia this month, we've had the data breach of Qantas, which there has been some speculation and no confirmation about whether it was Lazarus Group. Now we're seeing these big government agencies starting to clock on to how big and important of an issue cybersecurity is. Two huge agencies in the US have made some recommendations for improving memory safety. So the NSA, the National Security Agency, and the CISA, which is basically America's cyber defense agency, have suggested languages to improve memory safety. And these languages include Rust, Java, Go, and Python. Now, I will note, speaking to any dev, and you'll hear you can definitely build an unsecure platform in any of these languages, the same way you can build a secure one in other languages. But what's important is the secure by design philosophy. And seeing that these businesses, all the way up to government, are clocking in to the importance of cybersecurity. I do like to see this, even if it is a little too late. And to finish with something a little bit fun, Google has released a new Doffel app that took my socks off. What this means is you basically give Google a photo of yourself and it will make an AI version of you to help try on clothes you want to buy. You can give it a screenshot from Pinterest, from IG, your favorite model, or, you know, just some things you're thinking of buying online and it will help you try them on. I will note there appears to be some issues with pants, but they're teething issues. Hopefully by the time this app, which is currently only allowed in the US, comes to Australia, they will have fixed those out and I could try on all the clothes on Depop that I want to buy before I actually order them. Let us know if that sounds cool and if you're in the US trying it out already. That's all in SSW Tech News this month. If you think we've missed anything important, let us know down in the comments. Next up, we have SSW's own Callum Simpson with his talk Beyond the API, MCP and the Death of Integration Hell. Over to you, Callum. <laughs> 